Let's hear our beat before and after mixing. For those that are new, this beat is from my previous video where I gave away the project files for free so you can follow along. But in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how I approach my mix because although mixing can be very subjective, I think there are fundamentals to follow that will set you in the right direction. And that leads us to my five-step mixing strategy. One, leveling. Two, stereo imaging and panning. Three, correction and enhancement with EQ four dynamics and five effects. And by the end of this video, I promise you won't feel confused about mixing or overthinking the process. But whenever in doubt, just always understand that the composition comes first before the engineering side. Just like how you don't wanna spend long on a mix trying to fix a bad recording versus just having a good recording to begin with. So let's get started. When it comes to leveling, the first thing I like to do is go to a section where most of my sounds are, and typically that will be the hook. I'm just gonna go to hook two because the open hats I put on hook two. And from here, I like to start off with the drums because in trap, the focal point is usually the kick and the snare, or if there's no kick, then it's the 808. So then we could just go into mix, and then I wanna solo the drums, press mix again, so now we could go within that program, and then you can see my individual sounds, which is the kick, snare, hat, and the open hat. Then I just wanna solo my kick, and we could get started on the kick. Let's first see the levels that it's coming in at. And you can see right off the back that you know the kick has been processed because it's already hitting at zero dB, and if we do shift and mute and look at the wave, you can see how you have a regular sine wave going on, but when you move towards the front, you can just see how it has that ceiling, kind of like a saw wave. So that's why I said, if you focus on composition, then you don't have to really do much in mixing because this mix has the, the timbre that I'm looking for, and it has that loudness in the sense of hitting hard. So going back to the mix, the only thing now is since it's at zero dB, I do wanna put a limiter on it just in case any ghost frequency go past. So we could go into the inserts, go to our dynamic section and go to our limiter. Now this is part of the dynamic section, but this part is important and able for us to level it properly. Now, if I play the kick, we're gonna see if there has any reduction. So there's no reduction, but like I said, I just always wanna make sure so I could just boost it up just about like 0.5 just to get some reduction so that I know it's hitting the ceiling and nothing else will go past that. Then from here, I can go back into the mix and then just level it. And typically I like to have my kicks hit around negative 9 dB. Now you don't have to have that number, it's just that we just wanna have enough headroom because if we start our kick at zero and then we have to add our snare hat and open hat and the sample and the 808, that's definitely gonna cause the master bus to clip. So it's not about if it's bad to clip or not, it's more so you don't wanna clip in a master but you can clip in your sounds if that's the sound that you're looking for. So I'm gonna just drop this. So that's a good point, hitting around negative nine. And then I could go to my snare, press solo. But actually I wanna go back to my kick and solo that, just so you can see how hot the snare is coming in. So let's look at our snare. So you can see it's at plus three and even plus five. Now this is a perfect example of why you will wanna put a limiter because if I try to level this, just because I'm putting it down and it's no longer clipping, it still has that ghost frequency that can interfere within our mix, frequency wise and amplitude wise. So that's why you always wanna just make sure you put a cap to your sounds if it's exceeding past zero. So go back to our limiter and I'm not gonna have to do anything because you're gonna see there's gonna be some reduction already. So that's fine, then we could go back, and then I could unsolo the kick. And typically you just want the kick and the snare to be at the same level. Now, you could try to match it by dB, but just keep in mind that if we go to shift and mute, and we look at our snare, our snare is really processed. And you can see just by the wave that it's at the ceiling, all the peaks are getting cut off. So there's a lot of harmonics in the sound versus our kick. So we go back to mix, even though we're around negative 9 dB, it's still gonna be louder because we perceive higher frequencies more than the lower frequencies. So I'm gonna actually bring this down a tad bit. There we go. And then I'm just gonna go to my hi-hat, solo that. Now one thing to keep in mind that I did in the previous video, if we look at the hi-hat, you can see how the hi-hat is not coming in hot or processed like the other sounds. So what I did is go to menu pad, 14, go to the effects section, and then you wanna click effects again. And then you can see I put a soft clipper on that. So what the soft clipper did was pretty much 
add more harmonics to this hat to make it hit harder. So anytime you wanna make your drums hit harder, trying to enhance the harmonics in your sound, the frequency. So going back to the mix, let's level our hi-hat. And then we could go to our open hat, but I'm just gonna unsolo the rest because that's the last of the drum sounds. And then let's see our open hat. Our open hat is already good. I'll probably just drop it down one dB. Because you can see that it's being panned more to the right. So any sound that gets panned to the right or the left is gonna be perceived louder as well. So then we could press mix again to get outside of that program. And then we could go to our 808. Now, I just wanna solo the 808 and unsolo the drums. So the 808 plays by itself. And I wanna do menu pad 14 because I also wanna show you that I did bring in the attack a bit because there is a kick with this 808. So I kind of just use the envelope to take out the kick a bit. Now for me, I don't care to get perfect with my sounds. I know some people will be like, oh, you could do this with the EQ or you could use all this other stuff. This is fine for me. So going back to our mix, unsoloing the drums. Let's just find the right levels. Typically, I like to make sure that my 808s is not overpowering my kick. So I just like to turn my 808s all the way down so I can hear the kick. And then I'm gonna bring up my 808 just enough where it's not making the kick sound muffled out. Around seven dB is good. Then we could go to our sample and unsolo that. And I could just unsolo everything since now we got everything leveled. I already know the sample is gonna come in hot. So the way I like to level my melodies or a sample in this case is I wanna compare it with the 808 because it's so easy for our sounds to overpower the 808 because it has more harmonics. If we start to lose tone, in the 808, that means we're probably too loud with our sound. This is a good point right there. Now let's hear it before leveling and after leveling. Now, I just want to mention real quick, you may still see that our master bus is like hidden still close to zero dB and we still want that headroom of negative six you could just go back into the mix and you know bring down your levels or we could just put everything into a sub mix before it goes into the master. So those are two options. And the way you would just put everything into a sub mix is just by going to main. And if this menu is not open, just hit this icon right there. So we could go to sub mix one and then we could put our drums, sub mix one. Put our chop, sub mix one. Now, if I go to mix and then I go to the top right here and switch to sub mix, I could bring down these levels. Maybe even this 3 dB, and then we could look at our master. So that way we can still make sure we're not clipping in the master bus. Now we could get into step two, stereo imaging and panning. There's really not a lot of sounds, so there's not much that we have to like do with panning. And always remember that certain sounds is already panned. Like the open hat is already panned if we look at it. And the kick and the snare is usually straight in the middle. And for our hi-hat, since we do have the open hat panned to the right, we can pan our hi-hat a little to the left just to balance out the highs. So typically, that's how you would go about panning. If there is like similar frequencies, then you probably wanna pan one to the left and pan one to the right so we can go in. So when it comes to the panning, you could use the data wheel to go by tens or you can hold down shift to go into smaller increments. So let's hit a beat. And even just going 10 to the left, you can already hear the difference, there's more clarity. Also, when you're panning sounds, just make sure that you re-level them because like I said with the open hat, we perceive them louder. So I'm gonna just actually turn down my high hats a bit, probably just like 2 dB. 
And now you can hear more of that snare as well. So even when you're panning other sounds, you may have to still re-level the other sounds, but not anything crazy. I'll probably just go down about 2 dB. So that's sounding good. So then we could just press mix again, and then we could go to our sample. I'm gonna solo the sample real quick. Since this sample is quite wide and you can hear it on the left and the right, but it seems like it's unbalanced. So I'm gonna actually just pan it a little bit more to the left. Ten is too much, so I could just hold down with shift. Maybe half that. So that sounds cool. And when you hear with the mix. Like I said, panning could go a long way in having your beats sound very clear, but you don't have to get crazy with it. And also I wanna add a stereo width plugin on that. So modulations, stereo width. And let me just close this and solo the sample again. Usually I like to put the sample low frequency and mono. It just gives more of that clarity. And I could also even drop down the mids just a little as well. So now let's hear it. And this also helps for the artist to get on it because this sample you can already hear like it's taking up a lot of frequencies. So you don't always have to go to an EQ and think you got to cut at certain points. You could also mess around with the stereo imaging and push some of that mids into the back in a sense. Now let's talk about EQ and I'm gonna actually mix this in with the effects strategy because most of the time when you're applying effects, it has to do with enhancing the harmonics of the sound or at least in this situation. So if I go back to main and go to verse second and then go to mix, I'm gonna just bring the levels down for this one. So I could just bring it down to like where the first sample is. So around 16 is fine and I applied a half speed and air flavor. So with the half speed, it sounds like this. The half speed gives it a different harmonic because it's enhancing the lows because anytime you, you know, stretch something out, you're gonna get more low end. And then I brought in this air flavor and it just kind of cut that low end for me. This is how this sound. So that sounds good right off the back. And it did most of the job of cutting the low end out because that's what I would have done with the EQ. What I would say is that since I want vocals on it, I probably want to cut a little of that 2000 range because I can hear that mid range. And I could just go to a pair of EQ, go to the high mids. Since it's already at 2000, I could just, you know, go down about 2 dB. Now let's just hear the difference off. Something sub though, but at the same time, it makes room for the artist. And then if I go back to the mix again, then I have another sample section that I did. So I could go to verse three. And just for anyone that's new, there's not three verses, it's just three parts of my verse. If you watch the video, I'll break it down of my arrangement. And then mix again, go to sample two. I'm gonna also turn down these levels. So 16 is decent. Now I got the half speed and then the air flavor, I actually chose the different timbre for it, still the same plugin. And then I just apply the filter gate. So it sounds like this. So all these effects are messing with the timbre of the sound, which is the frequency, the filter gate, it dips out certain parts. So I don't even have to really apply EQ in that mid range like I did for that second variation. Now, if I go back to the main one, which is hook two, and go to mix, you can see that I apply only just the air flavor, and I'm gonna show you the difference without it. The 
You can hear that it just boosted those highs and the mids, made the sound sound more close to your face. So the first thing when it comes to EQ is just to listen to your beat and see what everything is doing. Since it introduced a bit of the mids and the highs, I'm gonna just go back and you know cut in those sections. So I could just turn it down about 2 dB again. Here's with it off. It's very subtle. And now I'm just gonna apply a high cut because if you hear it by itself, you can hear that has that very airy sound that can be a bit piercing. So I'm just gonna solo it to show you. First, let's hear it around 9K. You can just hear that airy sound and it's kind of piercing a little. And around 11 hertz or like 10K to 12 hertz, that's where you get that airy sound. So I'm just gonna cut from there and I could loosen up on how tight I want the bandwidth just because I don't want it to be as sharp and then before and after. So I'm not really trying to cut out those airy sounds, but I am trying to tame it a bit better. So that's why I pretty much did with the EQ. And that's all the EQ that I feel like I needed for this beat. Now we can speak about dynamics. You don't really have to compress your drums when you have your drums already knocking. And also if you played it on full level. So my hi-hat rhythm was played on full level. My kick snare played on full level. Now the typical use of a compressor is to control the volume throughout the mix, but nothing less, I could still always side chain to make that kick come out more than the 808. But if you hear the beat, like I said, you could just hear the kick already. So for the 808, I'm gonna apply Mother Ducker. And also I put an SP1200, which just gave it mid range as well. So let's go to dynamics. Now you wanna put Mother Ducker on what you want to be duck. I want the 808 to be ducked, so. I put my deducker on that and then press mix again, go to the kick and then I apply the mother ducker input because we're inputting that kick into the sound that we want to be ducked. Then I go back to the 808 and then mess with the settings. Now, as far as the settings go, it's pretty much the same as the compressor. You have your ratio, attack, threshold, and release. The ratio is how much you want it to side chain. The attack is like when it's going to start side chaining, when it's going to release off the side chaining. The threshold is pretty much at what point it's going to side chain. And then the auto is not a, like an auto gain knob where it will set it back to the same levels. It's actually something different than that. So we might as well just turn that off and we control the gain ourselves. So for the most part, Let's just hear what it sounds like. You can just hear that it's ducking like crazy. And that's because the ratio is set pretty high. So I'm gonna bring that ratio just a tad bit down, maybe around, you know, close to three. And then that attack is very low, like it's at 10 milliseconds. I just want to ease up off of it. So around 100. The release is fine, maybe just drop it a tad bit lower. The threshold is what I want to fix around. So if I went extreme with it, we don't want that. We don't want our release too low, but we do want our release short because there's drum sounds. So we want it to come back and go back very fast, but not too fast. So around 40. And then we just want to boost the gain a bit. That's pretty much that. And then I may just turn down the 808, it's just probably one dB. So now we can hear leveled versus the actual mix. So pretty much that's how I mix my beats. And it's more so the five step strategy that I go through. It's not like the 
same mixing techniques because sometimes you know I may have to EQ more or may have to compress my drums, stuff like that. But if you follow those five strategies, then you'll know what to look for when it comes to mixing. So if you like this video, like and share and subscribe. And until next time, peace.